holy crap, is this the most clickbaity title of all time? Uh, no, you're wrong. Actually, I'm going to show you how to make a better time lapse, literally with the Mavic 1 Pro. So here's the situation. Uh, all your friends are rich. They all have Mavic 2 Pros and you're poor. So you're stuck with your Mavic Pro 1. And when you show up to the playground, you get bullied every day because they have these awesome time lapses. The problem is they're making their time lapses on the phone and those time lapses suck. The hyperlapse in the app, uh, it makes a 1080p video or something like that. That's the only thing that the phone processor can handle. This is what you're supposed to do. You can do this with any DJI drone, actually a Phantom 3 if you need to. It doesn't have to be a Mavic 1. Yours is gonna look a million times better. This is the process. First, you need to set the photo duration to one photo every five seconds. That's what I did with the Mavic Pro. Then you need to use the flight mode. Orbit is the most stable, at least on the Mavic 1 and the old drones. So in order to do that, you fly right over the top of the building, set up um, the center of the orbit in the app, and then fly like thousand feet away. You need to give it a lot of room and then say that's the radius and it's gonna orbit that thing like a clock. This is gonna take probably half your battery. You wanna get 24 frames per second to get good video. And you don't wanna get home and edit this thing and it turns out to be really short. So you wanna get over 150 frames. So expose everything correctly. Don't change the exposure. This can't be an automatic. It has to be in manual. So light it until the exposure is at like zero and shoot in raw and then turn on the orbit and it'll go. You want it to run as slow as possible. And I think the slowest I could get the Mavic was like two miles per hour. And this still travels quite a distance in like 20 minutes time. When you get home, you're gonna wind up with a huge folder of DNGs. You want to work with RAWs. Don't use any JPEGs. Put those DNGs on your computer or download the ones that I have so you can edit this with me. Here we... I don't need headphones. Why am I wearing headphones? Here we're going to import all these photos to Lightroom. These are Mavic 2 Pro photos. So I know I'm a rich kid. Sorry, I have a Mavic 2 Pro. But um, I have a lot of drones, so... I'm in Europe right now, by the way. That's why I'm in this um, really, really nice studio. I'm at my girlfriend's place in Germany. So sorry I'm not in the fancy setup right now. Anyways, file, import photos... We're going to go find all our photos. For me, I put them on the desktop. So here's me talking to a little birdie I met um, a while ago when I had hair. Desktop Mavic 1 Hyperlapse DNG. That's where I put the folder, um, wherever you put it, you know, go find it. Make sure they're all highlighted. Check all if you have to. And click import. It's going to take a minute because this is uh, three gigabytes of data, I think. Mavic 1 Pro drawbacks. You have a smaller sensor, so it's difficult in dark environments. However, that doesn't mean the photos don't come out as good because if you look at the top right, these are all one second photos. So one second is what I found to work with the sunset and the cars to get little zoomies right here. I had to wait for the sun to go down. And by the way, it's dark outside. It looks a lot brighter here, but it's much darker. The Mavic 1 seems to be better than the Mavic 2 Pro in the dark, not in capturing light, but in dealing with it after the photo is taken. The Mavic 2 Pro keeps having this weird graininess in the black spots that I keep noticing. It's really, really annoying because it paid a lot for that thing too and it's supposed to be way better in low light. I have had better luck with long exposures on the Mavic 1 Pro than I did so far on the Mavic 2 Pro. I cannot believe I'm saying that. DJI does this thing where they launch a drone because everybody's excited but they're not done making the drone yet. But until there's a firmware patch to deal with that, I honestly get better results with these old drones. So the sensor's smaller. So this is what it looks like at one full second, like a long time after sundown. I'm in the development tab now. I'm clicked on the first picture in my gallery. We've got a totally white sky. So this is the biggest drawback with these tiny sensors. You don't have a lot of dynamic range, so there's not a lot of room to wiggle with. This is either white or it's gonna be visible and this is totally black. Cause look, we can take this down and then we see some sunset, but that's totally black up front. We're gonna try and fix this as much as we can. But the problem is if you go all the way back here to the very end, look at this last photo, totally black. You're gonna have way different settings. I mean, look at the exposure that I have to increase to get a look at this building. You're probably really worried that the rich kids are gonna bully you when you get back to school, but fear not, I have a solution for that. The problem is we gotta run this export twice. So I just made sure that I filmed on a really steady windless night so that even if there's a change in light, you know, my drone isn't wibbling and wobbling in the air for 20 minutes. So it's for the most part, these DJI gimbals are really good. So you're gonna get pretty consistent images. First photo, step one. Listen, I'm just gonna save you a lot of time. Copy these settings. You can screw around with it all day. I can tell you a million reasons like I do in basically every other video of why you don't wanna take highlights down way too far or shadows up too much. Keep them in a reasonable range. Don't touch blacks. I want the glow from whites, so increase whites a little bit. Now we'll just go on to the unique things about this photo specifically. Anyways, clarity. I don't want it to look crazy, crazy over sharpened. <laughs> Moving on. This is gonna be your preference. Um, but I say no because I don't like things looking crazy, super sharp. Now for vibrance, um, I'm gonna take that to like 50. Kind of a lot, but I think it does good for the picture. To give you an example, if we had a picture of an orange and we turn the saturation up, it would all look super orange. If we had vibrance all the way up, 
it would look like light orange and dark orange and maybe a weird tinge of yellow. So it adds variety and flavor, I guess, to the image. So I'm gonna turn this up to like 45, because I think, or 55, because I think that does good for the picture. And what I'm looking for, by the way, is the change here. We have this nice blue here. There's some variety here. That's what I wanna see. It doesn't matter what color it is, just that you can see the difference in it because later on, I'm gonna go and play with all this to change it. Saturation, uh, just 12 for good luck. Detail, basically in every single photo I ever do, it doesn't matter which, I'm adding some sharpening and noise reduction like this and this, and that's almost universal. In certain cases, I'll adjust that, but pretty much every single time it's the same. That's all I need to touch in here. The white balance is now the next most important thing. So you can make it really golden and really pink and just go bananas here. I don't want to do all that. I'm going to think I'm going to exaggerate. We can do a little bit. We can do. We, we, we can do a little bit extra to this photo with hue lighting and saturation. Um, you know, going back up to these settings and looking at this sunset, I think I'm going to take the whites down a little bit because I don't want it to be. I mean, I like the glow, but I, it's killing the sun back there. So um, we'll worry about that in the second batch. I'm going to keep this as zero. And what I'm going to do next is go down here to hue, saturation, lighting, HSL. Click on this little dot. We're in the saturation bar here. And this orange on the sun, I can click on it and drag it up to make it a little more flavor town. That's your preference. Oh, I don't like the way that looks, so I'm going to take it down. I think it's fine the way it is. Here's the trick. Here's the really, really sexy part of all this. Click photo one. Press control A. Everything selected. Click on this button, this really advanced setting here called sync. Everything's checked. Synchronize. Now it has pasted those settings to every single thing in this entire list. You don't have to touch another photo. But there's one more part of this. Remember earlier I said that it gets darker because the sun's setting. Look at this last photo. Oh my god. This sucks. What happened to all our amazing underdog artistry that we've been working on this entire time? So those settings that we adjusted were great for that first photo. They look doo-doo for the last one. Here's how we started out with the first photo. Like that. And now we've made it nice and pretty. So what the heck are we gonna do? Do we give up and commit to a life of being bullied? No. Highlight all these photos again and file export. Choose a folder to save all this stuff to and press export. I've already done it. I'm not gonna sit here and hold your hand through that. So you're on your own for that. Just press export and it'll run. Um, you wanna keep all these files at their maximum resolution so turn off resize if normally i do that for sending clients photos but i'm turning this off just export and it'll send them all out in full resolution now here's part two of this we've done an export for the brightness we need to do the opposite for the dark side i'm going to add some settings that i know are going to help this out a lot first of all um, highlights can't be down because that removes half the photo second shadows um they have to be raised a lot whites too why? Because that adds like it's really sweet glow to this whole photo. Contrast. Ooh, ah, does some nice stuff to the uh, sky back there. But look what's happening to the shadows in the front. Ooh, it's a trade off. So what I do sometimes is look away, miggle it up, and then just kind of feel out what looks cool. So I think, right. And then exposure. The Mavic is only safe for like one and a half stops, and then it gets weird. You got some real funky stuff going on in the back there, man. 1.34 okay uh, a little more contrast 37 look how cool that is we have this sweet looking photo and the sun looks really nice because we're actually exposed at the right temperature for the sky clarity this is going to make a difference because it's dark now um okay i'm keeping it 40 split toning don't even care don't even care oh you know what no don't care Here's what is going to help us out a lot with this photo. You have some really annoying, gross, disgusting, yellow ass street lights. We got to get rid of these, dude. Click on saturation thingy right here. Find some gross, icky, bicky spot and click on it. That's just king yellow and drop that down. Ugh, that helps so much. I can go find every other color that I actually care about, like blue and purple, red. And one super artsy thing, if you sniff your own farts, you can make everything super unsaturated except one color. Boom. I'm gonna undo all that. And uh, I think I'm happy here. Uh, more saturation. Now that we've gotten rid of that gross stuff, more vibrance. Oh, there's nothing else I'm gonna do to this. That's it. So I think I'm happy. Oh my God. 
We're going to show these rich kids highlight everything again. Once again, the most advanced PhD setting in this program. Click sync. Oh my gosh. Synchronize everything the opposite way now. Control, shift, E. But here's what you're going to do this time. So when you choose a folder, go back to the last spot that you were just at. Uh, this time, when you go save your pictures, you need to make a second folder. The first one was for the light rooms you did at the light with the bright time lapse with all the settings synced to that one. Now you're on the opposite end and we're going to do a dark one. So make a new folder and my called mine light laps dark and laps light one for the light one and this one for the dark one and put them all in that folder, save it, export. It'll take, I have a i7 6800K. So it took me like 20 minutes or something. Just be patient. And then when you're done, here's the last part of this. We're going to completely leave Lightroom totally. I already did the really complicated stuff and ran this through After Effects to do some manual motion tracking to see if this is better or not. Honestly, I can't believe I'm saying this because I'm like a huge into After Effects and everything it can do and make lightsabers and whatnot. But dude, um, it actually doesn't look better, I don't think. I I went in here and tracked a frame as best I could. Good news is we can do this the fast way. So um, in Premiere Pro, double click. We want the bright one first because it's easier to see corners and edges. It's sharper. It's going to be easier for the software to track it because everything's visible. The other one gets too dark and it kind of gives it a hard time. Make sure image sequence is checked. Click on the first one, open. They're all gonna come in here, drag this right on top of the little note and it'll do everything for you. If we press play, it's gonna be tough on your computer because this is like above 4K. You know, you're looking at a lot of data and it's cramming all these single frames together to make video for you, which is nice of our computer slaves to do it for us. but. Um, we got to fix some things. This is an old export, by the way. Yours is going to look even better because if you remove the yellow and these disgusting street stain from um, the yellow lights, the street lights, then, uh, you know, it look better. But all we have to do is this first one, click, type in warp, warp, and warp stabilizer is going to be right there. Drop it on here. It's going to analyze and uh, it takes a full minute, maybe a little more to run through this. So it might take you longer if you're poor. And that's where you're getting bullied and you don't have a nice computer. When we edited this photo, we didn't do everything optimal for a dark photo, by the way, because it's too much manual work per frame. I'm going to get to that later on, how to treat a night photo the best way you can. But um, look, so we just finished the analyzer. So press play. We have a bump on the first frame, but beyond that, you, you have to do this on your own computer to get a look at how rich this is. But look how smooth like the colors are here. If we just play this loop back and forth, it's unbelievable in, in 30 frames a second. It's just liquid smooth. This is the Mavic Pro 1 on a 1 over 2.3 inch sensor. This is this is the, the rinky dink tiny sensor in the Phantom 3. And it's still, you know, mind blowing how, how good this is. DJI, it's not their camera and their software. It's, it's the gimbals that are like really, really good. You'll see there's like some grain on the mountains. Remember, we have two exports to fix that part. So the second thing we're going to do is double click again, bring in the opposite side, the, the dock side of our export. Image sequence checked, open. Now 29.97 again, um, and drop it right on top. And I've got a special shortcut for you. Now that we dropped it on top, all you have to do is click on the first one, click on warp stabilizer, control C, and instead of doing all that pain in the ass again, all we're gonna do is click on the second one and control V and look, all our settings from the first one, it's copied over. Oh my goodness, look at that. We've got a completely stable Beautiful video. The good news is it was mostly still night, so we only have one frame that was wibble wobble. So right here is where it starts smooth again. See that little bump? We don't want that. So um, deleting both these, cutting out to the front. We could have done something else. This is 30 frames a second, and geez, that again, that just looks, you know, you only get these things from running out with your drone and experimenting and trying. Like I had to screw up this shot like 10 times before I could get it to work right. So going out every single day and knowing what I'm trying to do and, and knowing like photography principles, I know that I can get this. I just had to figure out a way and conditions to make it work right. So I had to try again and again and again. That's the fun in it though, um, because drones have given me like a big reason to get outdoors. I never would have sit, sat outside in th this beautiful rich ass town in Scottsdale and watch the sunset unless I was flying this thing. It is stressful. I mean, I'm trying not to kill birds and stuff and worry about a million dads running up to ask me questions, but you have to aggressively like see something and get jealous over it online and say, I need that shot. And that's what happened to me. First frame here looks great for the bright. Remember, um, it starts to look really bad. So this is the reason we did two exports click on the top frame and, um, click opacity, 
Oh, the stopwatch is already on, so whatever. Turn it off. On. And go to the last frame. Just the very last frame. That there, even though it looks pretty, you know, dark but cool. Turn this to zero. And what's that doing? It's steadily getting rid of the top um, video's visibility. So by the time it reaches the end, you're totally depending on the light from the one that we exposed for the darkness. We have one exposure set for the brights and one set for the dark, and they mix so that at the halfway point, you have a perfect balance of the two instead of just depending on one or the other. You could do it in the day. Uh, daytime lapses aren't that flattering though because you can't get the long exposure. You need the night so that the cars stand out and you need it to be kind of dark. This is like 20 minutes after sunset, but I only flew for 10 minutes. Um, so that you can get motion blurs without it being way too bright. And you still see that the first frame was, was pretty bright. Let me do one more thing for you while we're here. I'm gonna make a new sequence and these are some presets I have. Um, I want this one to be 4K, 3840 by 2160, normal UHD um, at the same frame rate, 29.97. If you try and apply warp stabilizer or something that doesn't match, then uh, it's gonna give you an error. So before we copy these over to that new um, widescreen frame we just made, we need to click them both, right click, nest, and yep. We can copy this guy over to here in our new sequence. And look, it's a little cropped in, but you know, that's the best you can get if you want it to be 4K or widescreen. So let me see if I have to scale. Yep, I gotta scale a tiny bit back. And one more trick I'm gonna do to help you all out at home. Position. The sunset looks pretty here and the, uh, the cars get a little more vivid towards the end. So first one, I dropped a keyframe. That's my bookmark for point A. Now I'm gonna to go to the hold shift so it goes to the end and just go one frame back. And now I'm gonna make my second point. I already set a keyframe so all I have to do is change the value now for the position and it'll automatically create a second one so I don't have to click this. Click on the position, drag this down slowly until we find a nice spot that shows the cars and doesn't kill too much of the sunset back there. And this spot just tickles my insides right there. What we wind up with is this nice flowing Looks like I'm tilting down mid time lapse. Halfway through, doesn't matter where. Drop a keyframe. And same with scale. Go to the end um, where we have that other keyframe set right there. And drop a keyframe beneath it for scale. So these two remain where they are. The second half stays like this. Now hold shift so that when we drag it, it snaps. I'm going to press the left key like. Um, five times one two three four five and I'm going to create two new keyframes delete that first one because we want to get rid of it now we don't need it and uh, I'm gonna zoom in to like I don't know here pull this down so it's a little over on the frame so we're looking at the building and then now that that's been set zoom way over to the beginning and have it a little bit cropped in like that's probably good right there. Move it over some again. In general, we should get this nice weep. Typically I do that with time lapses and it gives it an extra, you know, funzy bit. Top to down looks nice, uh, makes me quite tickled as I said before. And it, you know, it just looks like an advanced effect. There's some movement there. I dare say this time lapse is better than joggy, jumpy frame, midday, one one fiftieth shutter, hyperlapse you get from 99% of people who are using the Mavic 2. So that's that. Take my advice um, or leave it, whatever. Don't forget to subscribe, comment below on any video requests. The only reason I'm saying all this is because um, I think if you try and send people off YouTube, YouTube gets mad at you. So I have to say, hey, use YouTube a lot. I love YouTube. YouTube is the best. So that they think that I'm like, you know, a super YouTube fan now and not trying to send you away to my actual blog. I can't say that word because, you know, but I have all these instructions written up and stuff, so um, take a look if you want. Cool, you know, it's not that hard. It just takes practice, and now that you know it can be done, go film your own, try and aim for sunset. That seems to be the best time, and you know, if you make something you like it, show me. If you have nobody else to show to, I'd love to see. Otherwise, um, cool.